Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a mineralogy lesson to share with you today. We're working through our live education Waldorf curriculum and I'm actually going to include a few lessons that are not specifically in this main lesson block. Even though we went over the formation of mountains, I'm going to be doing a separate lesson on earthquakes and fault lines. I'm using this book called Mountains and Volcanoes as inspiration for this lesson. So here's the work that we've previously done on the mountain formation with the four different types of mountains. And today we're going to be specifically looking at the different kinds of fault lines, especially the ones that are present in California, since we have a very famous or infamous fault line, and that's the San Andreas Fault. So I'm going to start out by naming the different types of faults. And after a little bit of research, I found that while there are several different kinds, there are two main kinds that I'm going to focus on for today's lesson. We're going to be doing the right lateral and left lateral strike slip faults. And I'm only going to draw one of them, which happens to be the left lateral fault. And maybe I should have drawn the right lateral fault because that's the San Andreas fault line. But these two kinds of faults don't typically build mountains. However, when they do run into one another or other fault lines, like we have in California, they can produce mountain ranges and we have the transverse mountain range in California where these fault lines are sort of butting into each other and forming these rolling mountains that give California coast and uh, into a little bit inland these beautiful mountain ranges and really beautiful landscape. So I'm going to write down the content for the lesson as well as draw the illustration on one page because this is the last page of our main lesson book and I have one more lesson to do prior to this on coal and oil and different benefits of sedimentary rocks but I wanted to also include one lesson on earthquakes in particular so I decided to do it on the very last page, which would just be a single page rather than a double page spread. So I'm putting the content and the illustration on this page before doing the second to last lesson. So I'm writing the content here and I'm realizing that this has already taken up half the page and it only has one illustration and it's, I omitted the other illustration for this type of fault since they are very similar. Just one is going towards the right and one is going towards the left. But the dip slip faults, those are actually very interesting and I'm debating how to include that in this lower half of the page. So I decide just to do two illustrations and one of them will have content related to it that's just very small. This is the normal fault line. But then on the next to it on the right side, I'm going to do the reverse fault as an illustration, but also talk about the thrust fault in a bit of content because the thrust fault is a type of reverse fault. So the normal fault is when you have plates that are divergent or, or pulling apart. That's the normal fault. And when you have two plates that are pulling apart and you have a normal fault, you can also have fault block mountains. And so the illustration is going to show one portion of the land going up and one portion of the land going down. And while these seem to be really simple illustrations, this whole lesson for the content and the illustration still took over an hour to do. It takes a little time to get the geometry correct when trying to draw these because you really want to show how these different pieces of land are moving in relation to its uh, to itself or you know to the part of the land that is moving upwards or downwards. So for the normal fault line I have one piece going down, one piece going up. I've labeled them with the foot wall and the hanging wall. And then the red lines, or the red arrows rather, on each of the illustrations show where the energy is going. And so for the normal fault, you have the energy pulling away. So that would be uh, in a divergent uh, continent and then or plate line. So they're pulling away producing um, fault block mountains, but this would be where tectonic plates are pulling away from one another. Conversely, when you have the reverse fault 
or the thrust fault, you have plates that are moving towards one another. And depending on the angle at which they're moving towards one another, the angle will either be pretty steep and the portion of the land will go upwards, or it can be at a more gentle angle of less than 45 degrees. And then that's going to cause the example that I heard online was a bulldozer effect so that you have great portions of land just being pushed over another portion of land. And the example given when I did some research online was Glacier National Park. So these are three really tiny captions to explain three different kinds of faults, but really this is all under the dip slip faults. And there are two main kind, the normal and the reverse, but within the reverse, you also have the thrust, which is a very specific kind of reverse. Now, there happens to be even more types of fault lines, especially when you start combining the two uh, or fault lines are running into one another. I ended up not including those other very specific kinds of faults and just kept to the ones that we were previously studying or ones that were relevant for us in the state of California. I added a little bit of detail around the edges of the page because I found that I had just consumed the entire page with the illustrations and the written portion for this lesson. I hope that you've enjoyed this series looking at our mineralogy main lessons. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find more information about the geology, earth science, and mineralogy main lesson blocks that we've done, as well as all of the projects and links to all of the resources that we're using. And you can find the link to that blog post down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.